to those who suffer. So therefore I give, therefore I receive. I release the blessings of God over my family, over my finances, and over my future. And I believe I receive unhindered and uninterrupted in Jesus' name. If you believe it, I need you to make some noise and clap your hands in this place. I saw y'all. Pressure 
God is giving us the ability to be sustained and keep going, right? So I'm so grateful that, guys, we're almost at a year, 365 days that we've been worshiping together. Is that good? Is that good? I, I, I said 365 days, and I try to, I've been with my wife 7,338 days. Uh, do the math, that's 20 years. I, I know y'all know. Yeah, that's the math, that's the math. 7,000, I've been with 7,000 days. Can you imagine that? Some of y'all know my relationship. I ain't gonna go there yet. Some of y'all in there, I gotta break, break you uh, But I'm so grateful. And, 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 and God hit me. I said, what we're gonna do, we're not just gonna celebrate it on one Sunday. We're gonna take the whole month of November. And we're gonna celebrate the whole month. I'm gonna have a preacher come in every Sunday. And they're gonna bless us every Sunday in November. What y'all think about that? Yeah. I mean, we're gonna, listen, listen to me. We're gonna celebrate. It's gonna be off the chain. Amen? I got our overseer coming. I got our senior pastor coming. I got two guests. It's going to be good. So you got to be here. You got to bring somebody. I got a lot of fun stuff that I really just want to um, just show. And, and, and a lot of you guys, all of you guys will be a part of it. Um, I thank God for the, the, the creative team and just all their ideas and all the things that they're doing. I'm just, I'm just, so, I'm just so grateful um, to that. And then um, the Thanksgiving, I really want us to get a part of that. Uh, we are a church that gives. That's our culture. Um, and, and I've always gone to be a giver. And I'm so glad that when I married somebody, I married a giver. Amen. And my children are givers. I make my children give. It's a culture. But the Bible is clear where he says, I only give to people who give. I give to people who sow. I don't give to stingy people. Hey, Jesse. I, I don't give to stingy people. All right? People who are always about themselves. As a matter of fact, there's a Bible, there's a word that says, God resists the who? The who? Those are individuals who only think of themselves. And I'm so glad that we are a church and a culture of the church that don't think of ourselves. But I believe in God that this church is going to be a church and we're going to be giving away cars. Let me see. We're going to be giving away cars. Let me try to again. We're going to be giving away cars. We're going to be able to put people in homes to spark them off. And when they get acclimated to how it is to run a house, they're going to turn those keys over into somebody else. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let me, let, me, let me give you something out of this thing. The pastor that you serve with dreams big. So if you dream little, you're going to have to come to the dream big class. And I'm going to teach you how to dream big. Look at somebody say, dream big. We don't get into the world, that's what I got to deal with today. But that, that's what my mindset is. I, I, I'm moving right now. I'm, I'm making efforts so that we as a church will be able to put people in houses with no notes. Amen. The only seat that they sow is going to be the down payment for the next people that come into the house and God give them what they get they need. Amen. Okay. Am I, am I moving too fast? I'm going to push y'all, okay? Because we serve a big God. I said we serve a big God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, it says, and God said, let there be what? I told y'all last week, right? We limit even what that looks like. When we hear let God, let there be like, we only think cosmos, sun, moon. Let me show you how really that looked. When God said let there be light, he put 250,000 galaxies in the earth. And in those 250,000 galaxies, those galaxies had 250,000 galaxies. So let there be light was more than what we give credence and credit to. Can I be honest with you? God is more than a God, I'm already preaching, that, that can just pay your light bills. Pay your car note. Don't limit God to responsibility and stewardship. If I'm a good steward, I don't need God to pay my light bill. It's, it's, it's got to be in here. If, if God gives me wisdom, I don't need him to keep my gas. And all I got to do is stop going to Wendy's and get the four four and put a four on four. Amen. 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 I, I, I let God use that. And I want God, I want his supernatural, extraordinary move. That's the kind of God that we serve. And I'm telling you, you only live by how you behave. And if you believe small, you will receive small. If you think small, you will
will, as the Bible says, Proverbs 27 and 9, as a man within his heart, that is exactly where he is going to be. God told me this morning, no, it was Friday morning, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, and God gave me this example, he says, Vic, you know how a custodian that operates in a building Y'all can sit in the soda with, with a bunch of keys. Right? You know where he is, even though you don't see him by the keys, by the jingle, right? You can know that he comes with the key. And he says, he actually has a key for every individual door. Right? He has one for music class, he has one for the but do they still do home ed? So they need to bring home ed back into the school system, because a lot of our children, that's a whole other conversation. Anyway. You know, I had home make. I love home make. I learned how to sew. I sew now because I don't make things. Did you? Yeah, she didn't go to home make because that's why we still working on cooking. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. All right. Uh, they have for the biology class. They have for the math class. They have for the chemistry lab. And he just has an individual key that unlocks the door. But then, watch this. There is a master key, and the master key unlocks. You know what God said? He says, Vic, I want to give you the master key. I don't want you just to open up a door for finance and then have a door open for, for, for healing and then have a door open for uh, deliverance and then have a door open for opportunity. He says, I want you to have a master key that will unlock every door. Somebody shout, Lord, give me the key. Lord, give me the key. I, I, the reason why I'm having y'all say a lot of stuff because I believe the Bible where it says in the book of Revelation we overcome and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and you become what you begin to speak. In Genesis, okay, let, let's do this real quick. Okay, go to Genesis 1, okay, you're already there. 1 and 3, look at what it says. And it says, and God what? Go to Genesis 1 and 6. What do you see? And God, go to Genesis 1 and 9. And what did he say? What, what, what is the recur recurring thing that you see? And God what? And God said, and God began to speak, and God began to talk, and God began to declare certain things, and begin to put things in the air. You have to, you have to continue to put the word of God into operation. You have to, to continue. The Bible says he began to see, he began to say it, and he said it, and he said it over and over again. And began to do it over and over. And begin to go to Genesis, uh, do one and um, do one and thirteen. Uh, this ain't in my notes, but I feel something real quick. One and thirteen. What it say? Uh huh. Go to go to uh, uh, go to. Let's see. Let's do. Mm, let's do verse twenty. Genesis one and twenty. And what it say? And what? Okay, go to, go to 24. <laughs> I just want you to see something. And God said, go to 26. And 26. And 26. that 
to say. And you have to say what you believe. Touch yourself and say, say it until you see it. You overcome by how you speak. And you have to say that thing that you believe until you see it. God see it, he said it, he said it, he said it, he said it, and what happened? He saw it. You become what you believe, but you have to declare. And I asked God, I asked him, I asked him for the key. I said, Lord, what is the key? I want the master key. I need the best of key to unlock it for my family, for my children, for my marriage, for my business, for my life in the natural and that in the spirit. God wants you prospering, not just in the spirit, but he needs you to look like prosperity to those who don't believe that he can do what he says he can do. Right? What is the master key? The master key, he says, is, everybody shout, faith. Right? Go to Romans 12 and 3. Romans 12 and 3. Okay, before we do that, I apologize. Go to 2 Timothy 1 and 17. I gotta push this. I gotta push this hard. 2 Timothy 1 and 17. You gotta say I got it. I think we need to get an Apple system because we want that Samsung thing back there. That's why stuff is getting glitched. <laughs> she said, don't do that. Okay, I apologize. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I apologize. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Yes. 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I want to show you something real quick before I go into what we have today. I'm still dealing with our theme of having a limitless life through God. Living limitless. And let me show you the ways of how we live. I know that's right. It says, for God has not what? Given who? I want, you to, I, want you to, I want you to take out us and make it personal. For God has not given me a spirit of what? Fear. Right? Underlying spirit of fear, right? But what he gave me was what? Power, Power what? Uh, and uh, let me show you what else he gave me. Now go to Romans 12 and 3. If you have fear, it is not from God. Alright? And I'm gonna tell you what brings fear forth and how you can get fear out. Fear is a crippler. Fear is a binder. Fear is a restrictor. Fear is a hindrance. Fear is a false reality of something that will never happen. That's why God didn't give it to you. Because the word of God is sure. One thing that God cannot do is what? If God said it to you, then he cannot retract it from you. It has to happen. Right? Look at, look, at, look at Romans 12, 3. It says, For I say, though or through the grace given to me, this is Paul talking to the church in Rome, he says, To every man that is among you, not to think of himself what? Now, why is that important? God didn't tell us not to think high. He just says, When you think high, don't think too high than, you, than you're able to walk into. That makes sense? He says, I want you to think high. I need your mind to go beyond your natural situation. A lot of times we get stuck in life because we are looking at what we see. But if we got the key, the master key, it tells us that we walk by and not by. If you're trying to see it, that is not faith. We used to believe that seeing is what? I know you're into it. But through the Bible's uh, understanding, seeing is not believing. But not seeing is. If you can see it, I don't need it. That's why 
Bible says, I need you to walk by faith and not by why? Because your eyes will play tricks on you. You ever had, I'm going to be honest, I had somebody from a far off that looked wonderful, but as they got closer, <laughs> it changed on them. I'm not going to do that this morning, okay? We're going to be good. We got this. When you see something from afar off, it looks inviting. But when that thing comes closer to you, you say, oh, my Lord. You like Danny Glove. He said, Danny Glove, who was it in um, Glory? Boy, boy, Green. Oh, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Y'all know how my brain sets up, all right? That's how it's see. When you see something from afar, that's why you can't trust your eyes. You, you have to go after it. Who remembers the man uh, who was blind in the Old Testament when, when Jesus sent him to the pool of Salaam? The Bible says he was blind, and Jesus um, stood the ground, made clay, and put it on his eyes. Watch, watch the power of your faith and God's ability, right? God knows I didn't have that prepared this morning, but he just gave it to me. I just got a text message from him. Watch this. The man who was already blind, Jessica, he wanted to receive sight. Jesus spits in the ground, makes clay, puts it on his eyes, right? And then tells him to what? What did he tell him to do? He says, go wash your eyes in the pool of love. Why is that important? He is already blind. Now he got mac on his eyes. <laughs> now he has dirt on top of blind eyes, and God says, Go watch. My question is, how can he see? He's already blind, but he wants sight. The Bible says he watches mm, six times. The blessing to me was not the fact that he came back and the skill that he received. The fact was this. He was already operating in sight, excuse me, vision. Mm. A lot of us don't need sight. We need vision. Sight is a function of the eyes. Vision is a matter of the heart. You believe. You see how you believe. You don't see and believe. You believe. That's how you see. Somebody shout, Lord, give me vision. That was so good. I'm going to pay myself this morning. Y'all sit back and quiet. I'm going to pay myself this morning. You got to have vision. He wanted sight, but God was giving him Vision. Vision. Hey, babe. I hate what happened to you. I was so mad, but I'm so grateful that you were in this building today. And you know what? God is going to touch you today. When I mean touch you, this finger is not going to hurt because you believe in the power of God. You believe in the power of God? Let me show you how it works. Church, stretch your hand. I'm going to show you right now with faith looks like. Now, God, we are now moving in faith because we're believing, Father, for the complete healing of this living. Matter of fact, you are the one who created her. You are the one who created this. So, therefore, what medical can't do, the power of God we command to do now. In Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you call pain to cease. And even while she's sitting in the building, let the anointing begin to flow through her fingers, through her hands. And what she could not do, she will begin to exercise. And the next time that they undress Father this womb, they will begin to see things that is medically, I'm feeling God right now, impossible. But with you, all things are possible. And I pray for it in Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Now, I, I, I want you to understand how faith operates. Faith, hey, Hannah, faith operates in such a place and in such a presence that you don't need others to validate how it is. I know right now what is happening in her hand. I believe right now in the word of God. And we have to give that to the culture of our children at that stage. Because if they can believe now, it's going to be nothing when they get older. Proverbs 22 and 6 says that we ought to train up our children in the what? In the way that they should go. So that when they come.
come of age to have their own revelation, they won't ponder and wonder if God, but they will know God came. Amen. Oh, man. Somebody shout, think big. Amen. Give it to the test. He says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but when you do think, look at your next says, you got to think. you got to think, what's that word? What it means to be sober. If you're not sober, what are you? <laughs> oh, you're really over that day. If you're not, if you're not sober, what are you? If not drinking. Anyway, right? Well, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, if it is, you're going to be drunk. Be drunk with the Spirit of God. Be overtaken with His presence. Right? But this is what I want you to focus on. According as God, watch this, had dealt to every man what? I want, you to, I want you to take notice of this word right here. This word is so important. We've been saying a measure, which is to declare that there are many. But the word of God in its true origin, in its true essence and anointing, the Bible says God has given every man what? The measure, which means you don't need any more of what he already gave. Touch yourself and say, I got everything I need right now. I have the exact faith I need. God says, I give it to every man the measure that he needs. You have right now the faith to unlock the next door in your life. You don't need no more faith than what you got. But like my grandma would say, use what you got. Operate. You have right now. God says, when I made you, I didn't give you fear. I gave you what? I gave you the measure of what you need. Our responsibility is to work that measure. Your mama can't do it for you. Your daddy can't do it for you. Your boss can't do it for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. You are going to have to work your faith. That makes sense. You got to work what's in you. How do you do it? James 1, he says, you, you continue to operate and, and in that, watch this. <laughs> you think, I'm going to tell you what works your faith. Can I tell you what works your faith? Ask. What works your faith? Say, like, pass up. What works? Y'all going to talk to me. I'm going to talk to y'all. Y'all going to talk to me. Say, pass up. Don't do it with attitude. God don't like your attitude. I heard your voice and your tone was in risk. See, that's why God, God can't bless you. Your attitude ain't right. I told you last night. <laughs> we were talking about the same. What we said? We said something. Oh, I said, get over here and kiss me. She said, mm, you don't talk to me like that. You do it nicely. I said, hey, you, get over here. <laughs> right? She says, no, you have to say it in a way that's nice to me. I said, well, this is what I do. If you cook me a nice meal, I'll stop. I just said, 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 I just said. You, you have to, you have to say, say, Pastor. What works my faith? What works my faith? Problems. Look at you Look at you do. What? <laughs> Go to James chapter 1. Go to James chapter 1. Go to James chapter 1. You, you want to know what works your faith? It ain't that five dollars you found on the ground. <laughs> it's that five dollars they say you owe it. You don't know where it came from. Right? Look at James chapter 1. Go to verse 2. Lord. Yeah, yeah. My brethren, count it all what? I know I'm missing all of them. I'm not doing nothing that I gave you, right? I know this is God, so blame God, don't blame me. Yeah. Okay, he says, count it all what? When, not if, but when you what? Fall, come into, receive what? Diverse what? Temptation. Temptation, let me give you Temptation is not a mess with theology. Temptation is not a bad thing. What is it? Temptation is having a real need just at the wrong time. And when you do something outside of the timing of God, you mess up everything. You have God is about seasons and time. He wants you to be connected to a spouse, but if you're not mentally ready, then if you jump before your time, you're going to not only mess up yours, you're going to mess up his. But you're going to mess up hers. 
That's why it's not feasible for you to get in love with a relationship if you ain't tight with it. You gotta make sure everything with you is right in order so that you don't bring in past hurts, past responsibility, past rejections into a presence or into a promise that God has for you. That's why when God brought them out of Egypt, he wanted them to ensure that they had their minds right. They wanted to be free, but what happened was their body was free, but their minds were still under the slavery of Egypt. That's why in Psalm 78, verse 41, our theme scripture, it says, And the children again turned away and tempted God, and they limited him. Why? Because they were free in body, but their minds were still locked up. That's why we can't be free. We can move to another house. We can get another job. We can move to another city. But if we're personally still locked up, we're going to take that locked up mindset to the next city. Somebody said, Lord, free my mind. And the rest will follow. Uh, the of the black white. Uh, watch this. Who sung that? Campbell. I know no ad. I knew something about it. I knew something about it. Something about it. You got to free your mind. That's why he says, don't trip. Oh, no. Ooh, that's all right. That's all right, James. Get back to James. You got to preach back there. All right. James says, James says, James says, and James saw. It says, when, he, when you fall, you're going to fall. It's going to happen. Touch your neighbor. Look at your eye. Say, say, neighbor. Listen. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. You're going to be challenged. You are going to be challenged. Everything that God put in you. It's going to, people are going to tell you you're not doing it right. People are going to tell you you're not doing your best. People are going to tell you I can do it. You're going to hear the mouth and the conversation of others saying what they think you cannot do. You go, what? That's going to test your ability to know who you are. That's why he goes back and says, go to verse 3. Knowing this, you got to have a confidence that he the problem is coming. Look what it says. That the what? Right. The what? Right. The frustration, the agony, the anger, the pressure of your what? Right. So what is already working? Right. What is already working? Right. Not only is your first faith going to be stronger, but look what it's going to bring. Go to the next verse. Verse 4. But let what? Right. Do what? Work! Let it work in you. A lot of us, including myself, need patience. We need patience. I was in office night yesterday, and this man and his wife, they were, they were at the copier. And the copier wouldn't respond in a way that he was looking for. And I heard his stages of anger. I heard it. It went from, I know. <laughs> right? I'm over there trying to take care of my business, and I hear him over there, and it goes from, all right, that's a listen. Right, right, right? <laughs> when he got to listen, he got a little heavy. And after listening, he said, you know what? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but God is like, you be a spirit of fear. But God is like, if this man turn up in all his back, right? <laughs> They showed, they showed a clip uh, from a young man, I think it was somewhere in Texas, where this young boy came in with a rifle, and he only had one bullet in it, and he came in to do damage with one bullet, and a coach ran to him, y'all saw that, and the coach administered love, and he gave it a hug, and, I, and I, for a moment, I said, if some break out like that, big, you're going to hug him. No, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. He, 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 he went from, all right, now, to me. When he got the you know, and his wife was sitting over there like, honey, honey, it's so, and I was like, uh, sir, if you don't hurry up and get me, my cop is, something's about to go down. And he looked, he said, I don't know. He said, sir, can you help me? I said, sir, you can stop what you're doing with me and help him, help him over there. I don't know what he's like, right? Patience <laughs> is what we need. And God is causing, mm, not 
the devil, I'm not a devil's advocate, but some things we give him credit for that he don't deserve the credit for. Don't make him famous. He's not. This is what it is. God is allowing things that happen in your life to work the faith you have so that that faith will produce what? Patience. Give me patience. Let me breathe. Because when I walk in this room and see this room is not clean, and I told this child five times, Lord, give me patience. Right, Emmanuel? Yeah, whatever, man. Lord, give me patience. See, God is allowing our children to work with patience within us. See, children, y'all should be right there and say, go ahead, Pastor. And that was an open door for y'all. Y'all missed it. I just gave y'all an open door. Right? But God is working patience within us. Patience in the faith that we have. Somebody shout patience. He says, and when your patience becomes mature, this is what you're going to be. What? Perfect, which is mature and complete. What? Wanting. That's the limitless living. God desires for every last one of us in here to be perfect and what? Complete. Wanting that's the favor of God. Anybody in know what it's like not to want anything? Yeah, I want something right there. Right? Right? I want something I want in here. Right? I want to hear him with a fried chicken, macaroni, and cheese. And God agree, it's too big for a chicken, right? I want it. So, a lot of us, we were wanting before we walked in here. Like, what? what? Let's get him off. Don't worry about that. That's an ATM thing. Don't worry about that. Right? We were wanting. Some of y'all right now, I'm preaching. And your mind is like, Lord, I need to. If you can do. Am I being honest? You're worrying about something that God says, hey, I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey, did you get out of that I got it. God says, I got it. But it is, I want you to have it. He says, I'm bringing the pressure to produce patience in you. It ain't the devil, it's, it's me. I'm pushing up on you. I need you to step out. I need you to come. I need you to bring it. You got it, but you waiting on me to do it. I'm waiting on you. There is, it's in you. I put it when I made you. I didn't make you with fear. So if I got fear, y'all know you're ready to mess with you now. Go to First John. Dang, I still ain't gonna be a dick in my nose. I'm still God. Go to First John four and eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> So if I got fear, here it is. Look at John, 1 John 4 and 18. Here it is. Here's the one. You ready? Y'all ready? 1 John 4 and 18 says, There is what? No there is what? No and what? Love. Say that word out. Love. Love is for the way you look at me. Oh, it's for the only one I see. Be worthy with me. Extraordinary. I've been right there. I've been right there. I'm going to wait for the next time. I love it. I've been out there. Do, 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 so if I have fear, let's be honest. Do I have love? If I have fear, <laughs> you know what? On the top last week, y'all know what we do. Let's talk. Matter of fact, let's talk Tuesday. Oh my God, we're gonna be back. Let's talk Tuesday. Still on tour. We're gonna be back in military circle mall on Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's going down. My mother was in when we was talking about this, 
And she said, baby, somebody said they gotta fear bugs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right? I said, yeah, mom. They were talking about, and especially your daughter-in-law. Y'all gonna tell us that your daughter-in-law. She sleeps with three crosses and four bottles of holy water. I can't even get a hug. <laughs> right? She says, but you know what, baby? That love thing was wrong. Because I even had to check myself and wonder, how is my love? Because God says, if I didn't give you fear, and in love there is no fear, then why am I scared? Anybody here got issue with fear? Talk about what you if there, is an, if there is an issue of fear, you have, to, <laughs> you have to ask yourself, how is my love? Do I love people or do I tolerate, put up with? Or, or uh, Peter used this word, excuse me, when Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me? says, Master, you, you know I do. Why are you tripping? He says, feed my sheep. Jesus came right back and said, hey, Peter, do you love me? He says, Master, listen, you know, you, you know I love you. I, listen, I cut an ear off for you. I love you. Jesus says, Feed my sheep. Jesus comes back again and says, hey, Peter, for real, for real. Do you love me? Peter says, Master, thou knowest all things. What Peter was saying, the Greek terminology, what Peter's love was describing was what they call phileo. Phileo says, I have a fond interest in who you are and tolerate you for a certain season and then. I'm ready to leave, I leave. But the love that Jesus was requiring or responding or asking him was a, an agape love, an endless, unrestricted, unhindered, uninterrupted love. Let me ask you, what type of love are we operating from? Do we tolerate people until we're ready for them to go and cause that love? Because if we are, that's why fear is there. God says, I want you to love. Look at what he says. He says, because when you have a mature love and a copy love, what does the love do? What does it, what does it do? Love will evict any fear. Flies. Boo. Two. What is it? It chapter two. It job. Chapter two. 
Any chapter, there's a chapter. What is it? It's a demon cloud. Demon cloud. It. You still at it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> think the baby, the baby, yeah. Why? Why are we? Why are we? Why, what? What? What drives us to watch it? I love y'all in 
this time. She weak right now. She can't even put the scripture out. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? We overcome my words. She got a strike on that. Look at her. Y'all just done messed up my whole life. I don't even know what this one is. What was I even talking about? What was I? Y'all, y'all don't even know that y'all strike. That's all we know, right? Okay. All right. No, I didn't know that was your brother. Bless you, man. How you doing? And little dog. What's up, little dog? <laughs> Are you finished? Yeah, you have nothing to say. Okay. Am I close? Because I, I, I can't get back to my other stand. So y'all just might wait to me.
That's not things we used to do. We don't do. We don't do it anymore. Why? Because we allow love to come in and it's so tight. Love. Even you mothers over your children. Y'all operate in love. And you don't let them go. You know what I'm saying? But you keep yourself at a such level. I don't know why I just said mothers. I guess y'all just have a different. I don't say spirit. Y'all go a different way. You, I see that's why I see the Lord know this. <laughs> we all go working on Right? But that's, that's what he says in James. Let patience what? Work. So there's a way that they know. Like my wife, if she'll be honest, if she'll be honest, she'll tell you, out of 7,330 days in the year, she can count on her hands how many times she's seen me angry. Right? Well, <laughs> 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 that's what you're gonna do right there. You know, okay. I can't do that act right. That's why I gotta get a church wife. I gotta get a church wife. Church wife act right. That's the rule of life. That's what I'm gonna like, act right. She can tell you, honestly, it's um, it, it takes a lot to get me like. Man, it, it does. I don't know why. I do know why. But sometimes it gets misunderstood and people try to take advantage of it because I am soft-spoken. It's not that I'm bold, but I just believe there's a way that you can respond in such a way that people don't know where you're coming from without you getting irate. Now, now some of us don't have that. <laughs> Some of us scream at the people that are driving that can't even hear them anyway. And I'm in the car with you, and I need you to understand, keep both hands on the wheel. Because they can't, <laughs> one time I asked her, do, do, can they hear you? <laughs> can they hear you? Sir, you don't do that to me. You don't put that hand up for me. I'm God's servant. You don't know me. I said, hey, can he hear me? <laughs>
Love produces. Love is comforting. Love is patient. All that love is kind. It speaks to everything love is. And that, 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 that wrong believing can really, really put you in a bad, bad place. And, 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 and what you start to do is you start to change your perspective on how you think. So this is, you don't pray, why me, God? You pray, God, what are you doing? What, what are you, what are you sharpening? What are you making me better in? Not, not what are you doing to me, God, but what are you doing this for me? What, where am I getting ready to go? What, what am I getting ready to accomplish that you've allowed this challenge to happen? I'm at this place in my life. You know, what, what are you getting ready to do? And so God says, I want you, church, to begin to start to discipline and release yourselves and, and really excuse me, bring yourself into agreement to what God has said. Y'all remember the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son, the Bible says, what caused him to go back to his father was what action? What happened? What did it say? When he was in the pig pen, what did the Bible say? He came to himself. He changed his perspective. Right in the midst of his trouble. Right in the midst. He didn't wait till everything was good. Right when it was tough, he had an adjustment. I don't have to live this way. My father owns. My father is this. I'll go back. I'll be humble. I'll get it right so that I can be in a position. Why? Because he had wrong belief in how he was living. God says, I need you. I need you to believe right. I need you to start thinking, thinking bigger than any other. Thinking more than what you're thinking. Because your children are going to live in a world that we as parents form before them. We are the example. Amen? So as we continue to allow God, that's going to be key. Colossians 3. It says, let this mind be in you. Which is also in what? Christ Jesus. So, therefore, that's what we're going to have to allow. I want you to lift your hands in this moment. We're closing. You can stand to your feet. I know I said a lot of things, funny things, and just funny things, but one of the main things I want you to keep with you as you leave this place is God took care of all the limits. God took care of all of everything that we would ever go through. He already did. Paul said, so the life that I live now, Colossians 2 and 20, I mean Galatians 2 and 20, it says, the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Don't worry about the problem. Keep your mind focused on the promise. T.D. Jakes preached a great word yesterday. He says, the, problem, the promise of God is greater than the problems of men. Keep your mind locked to what God has said. And you respond to what he has said, like Genesis 1-3, 1-6, 1-12, 1-19, 1-20. So we get to 131 where it says, we're no longer hearing what God is saying, but we're seeing what he has said. Slide your hands up. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we're in this place. Because, Lord, we desire to see what you said. Lord, you're working on us. So we ask that you would help us in the areas that are causing us not to live at the maximum level where we're able to represent who you are in our life. We ask you now to help us with our love. Help us to love better, greater. Give us the agape for our fellow brothers in our neighborhoods, in our communities, for our friends, for our families. Help us, Lord. We don't want fear. We know you didn't give it to us. So therefore, Lord, we, we invoke and we release love in our hearts. We ask you, Lord, we repent and ask that you would forgive us if we're not operating 
in that love, where we responded in the wrong way, we fought in the wrong way, we didn't answer the right way. And we ask you, Lord, to forgive us and let us operate in that same spirit. And we can begin to see the abundance in our lives, the three and twenty of Ephesians. We want to see the exceeding abundance of the law that we can so I pray for these, your people. I pray for the hearts of those, I pray for the minds of those, Lord, that you would give us the ability to think differently, think clearly. That we want to approach it the same way. But we can clarify. That we will love like you love. We free you in our lives. But we won't be Psalm 78 before you. We won't limit your ability to do what you want to do in our lives. And for that thought, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory as we this place for your presence. I pray that you allow this alone to go with us in our cars, that these, this be the conversation that we have. When we get home, we pray the presence of peace and patience and the grace to allow patience to work with us. Even moments of frustration bring back to our mindsets of what we're producing. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for the presence of the Lord. Listen, I love you, my wife and I. We do. It's genuine. It's not fun. We want you to know that we are here to go with you. Thank God for you. all that you've done, all that you've connected. We thank you for trusting us with your family, with your future, with your finances, with your concerns. It is our heart's desire to see you reach the destiny that God has for you. We're going to do everything that he gives us the power to really do to ensure that not only you see the goodness of God, but that the people that's connected to you see it through you. You have a great responsibility, a great calling in your life, and God is using you to interrupt people's lives and introduce them to the God of their soul so that they can now not just talk about, but live their best life. Amen? I hope to see you on Tuesday as we continue to push forward and all that God has called for us. A lot of things are going to happen in November. We're going to be moving because we got lives to touch. We got destinies to be realized. Amen. And futures to really walk into. Dad, thank you so much for coming. So much. We appreciate your presence. Your presence will make a difference. Thank you for trusting us even with your daughter. The goodness that, the grace that you've allowed to operate in on it's evident. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, little brother God. Love you guys so much. Uh, before you leave, please hug somebody. Love on somebody. I'll see you Tuesday. Sunday. Listen.